the you know true lighting scenarios um the um uh, Rembrandt lighting, which we're all very familiar with, or you should be. Uh, the reason why there's so many paintings and photography that are that that's that's uh, been done with these uh, lighting scenarios is they explain the form really well. They draw the form really well. Um, Rembrandt lighting. Uh, you, you can imagine. I, well, first imagine this. Imagine you have a single light source. Um, this is a really expensive $12 light from Lowe's <laughs> um, that included the bulb. Um, but it's a, <laughs> it, it's a, it's a clip on light that painters, it's called a painter's light. Uh, that little uh, aluminum bell house that it has uh, really aims the light directionally. It's very inexpensive um, that the, the uh, light stands more, much more expensive than, than that, but it's, it, you know, you can get a, you know, inexpensive light stand or you can clip it to a door you can have a gaffer which is another person hold it up and move it for you um, but imagine putting this light on this piece of sculpture or on a human head and you know imagine starting up high you can see that the light source and the Rembrandt lighting that the light source is coming from uh, the upper left hand side on the Rembrandt lighting the first one on the left and it's filling in the eye sockets pretty much the one eye has light on the lid one is almost completely in shadow and then that little triangle of light and that is true rembrandt lighting uh short loop which is very close to it you just pull the light further forward and it shows more of the features the the shadow that's created underneath this nose is that's why it's called short loop. It's the loop of shadow underneath the nose. Um, and you can see it in butterfly lighting, which is like directly above that. And it's the shape of the shadow underneath it, describing it as butterfly. It's the, the light is centered and it's pulled forward so that the shadow is not very long. If you were to push the light back, that shadow would get longer and longer. And there is a really nice, grouping of form shadow and cast shadow when you do this i mean that a, a cast shadow has very hard edges to it uh close as it's closer to the object that's in front of the light that's casting the shadow onto the rest of the the, the face it gets it, the lines get harder and it gets softer as it gets further away it gets lighter too form shadow is just the whole object being turning away from the light can be very soft, like on the side of this cheek here. This is a very strong cast shadow underneath uh, the uh, the chin here and onto the neck. It's casting the head, is casting a shadow onto the neck. And it gets, you can see how hard it is and it gets softer as it gets further from the object. Another great lighting scenario that we've all seen looking at comics and looking at movies and cinematography is horror lighting where the, you just kind of completely turn everything upside down, put the light underneath the individual and shoot and 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 have the the light explain every, everything from beneath it. Um the things that the drawing that I do unless I'm trying unless you're doing a line drawing like very flat light meaning that the light is very even and there's very little shadow, you know, almost like a flash bulb that can be very helpful in drawing in line um, because it kind of puts a line around everything. And it's, a, it, and it, it's, 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 I've done that before. It's, it's, it's fun to, to shoot reference that way. Um, but if I'm, if I'm painting and I want form to it, I usually stick with Rembrandt and short loop lighting. Um, and that's most of the photography I choose uh, that we draw from because it explains the features. It explains the head so well. We're using, and, and I guess on you know in October we're we're kind of leaning towards the horror side maybe, um, but you can be these are not, you know it doesn't have to be exactly this. You can get great variations of these, but these are just starting places. And if you stick with Rembrandt and short loop uh, loop to start with, it's great for shooting your own photo reference. Um, the last thing, the the reflector and no reflector. You see this in the bottom right corner. Oh my gosh, Ray Bonilla is here. 
this bottom right hand corner, there's a you can see this little white corner. That's a piece of foam core, just a a, a glossy piece of 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 cardboard. And I don't have another light, but look at the reflected light that it creates. Um, and so this, I'm using a reflector. The one in the middle on the bottom has no reflector and you get lost edge, which can be very good if you want to do a painting with lost edge. But if you want to really see that, see the form and see the whole shape, you can throw a reflective light in. Um, and you don't need another light. You can do it with another light source, but you can just do it with a piece of cardboard and, and just keep angling it, controlling the angle, how close you get to it. These are the things that will give you the most, just these simple tools, the reflector, the light, and then your subject uh, will give you huge control on shooting photo reference. Um, Anybody want to add, uh, uh, Dale or Ray or Cassandra, uh, you want to add anything to this? I mean, this, this is stuff we've all learned early on and, and we use every day.